happy Wednesday. Today is all about the Apostle John and to understand who the Apostle John was and the difference that Jesus made in his life, we're going to have to go to a place that was similar to the place that Jesus first called John. that Jesus came and called John. He would have been working by the water, just like we are standing right by the water now, and Jesus would have come up and said, hey, follow me. And we don't know that much about John. We know that his dad's name was Zebedee. He had a mom whose name was Mary. He had a brother named James, and most likely they would have worked in a family business. Uh, John uh, would have been busy uh, mending the nets, and I wonder as he was doing that, if he would have felt a little uh, down. John, he at that age would have tried to apply to be a rabbi's follower. He would have gone to the local rabbi, a Jewish teacher, kind of like our pastor, and he would have, just like every other 13-year-old boy, would have said, uh, Rabbi, I want to be a follower of you. I want to follow you. And the rabbi would have thoroughly quizzed him on his knowledge of the Jewish law. And that uh, rabbi would then, in the case of John, have said either you're good enough or you are not good enough. The fact that Jesus finds John mending the nets means that John was not good enough to be the rabbi's follower. But Jesus saw potential in this young teenage guy. Together with his brother James, um, he begins following uh, Jesus. And it is a roller coaster, following the most uh, influential man in Israel at that, at that time. I imagine John would have been filled with amazement. He saw uh, Jesus healing people, making the blind see, making the lame walk. We were filled with amazement. He saw five loaves and two fish being made enough for a 5,000 families. But there is one decisive moment in John's life, and it shows us where he came from. And then as we follow John after that moment, it shows us where he went. We find that in Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, there is a debate going on between all of the 12 followers of Jesus on who is the greatest. And James, John's brother, and John pull Jesus aside and say, hey, we want to sit on your left and your right side. Those are the places of the greatest influence in this new kingdom that Jesus was going to make. And Jesus looks at them and he says the following. If you want, you can grab your Bibles with me. It is Mark chapter 10, of verse 30, uh, 43. Jesus says, but it shall not be so among you. Don't be arguing who is the greatest. Instead, whoever be great among you must be a servant. And from that moment on, John's life is changed. And when he sits down at the end of his life to write his gospel, he doesn't write as a teenager who struggles with pride. No, he writes as someone who is a servant, who is a sufferer of Jesus. It does not mean that John was not influential. In fact, when Paul is writing to uh, the church in um, uh, Eastern Eastern Rome, he says that John is one of the pillars of the of the church, together with James and uh, Peter. And one other thing that marks the life of John is that uh, James, his brother, was killed just a, a few months into the existence of the early church. Uh, Herod kills his brother James, and so John is someone that knows what it means to suffer for the sake of Christ. But he suffers, and he leads, and he does all of that with humility. John is the oldest apostle. He turns 93 before he dies uh, while he's the pastor uh, in the city of Ephesus. Um, and he writes the letter of Revelation. And in that book, uh, his greatest dream becomes true. Jesus rules and reigns over the world. Uh, we don't know much about John. But we know that he was a young guy that Jesus saw potential in. Uh, he followed Jesus' example of servanthood. He was challenged in humility. And he wrote a gospel telling the story of Jesus through the lens of someone whose life was, was changed. Now, one more thing about the book of John. As he wrote his gospel, he very carefully clipped his way out of the book. In the book of John, we rarely read the name John. He described himself as the friend of Jesus, the person that was standing there and so on. This proves to us again that he has grown in humility and that humility and servanthood prepared him for uh, the rules of greatness that we're going to follow as a leader, a big leader in the churches. As we go through a challenging season in our life, may we be encouraged that God might be preparing us to do something great in the years or months to follow. 
Well, that's all for today. Uh, we're going to continue tomorrow with why John wrote his own gospel. And before we, we do that, you'll finish up the project that is listed in this assignment.